Welcome to our thought for today, for today, Tuesday the uh, 9th of March. Today we're looking at Matthew chapter 26, um, verse 1 to 13. It says, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he said to his disciples, as you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the chief priests whose name was Caiaphas, and they plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way to, and to kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you so bothered by this woman? What she has done is a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. What we see here is the forces of opposition lined up against Jesus. Uh, the chief priests and the elders conspire in secrecy. Uh, to have Jesus arrested, as it says, in some sly way, and to have him killed. In a very real sense, they are plotting a revolution, not against Rome, because in actual fact, Rome will be their chosen partner in crime. No, their revolution is against the Lord himself. The situation is desperate, humanly speaking. Uh, Jesus is in very real danger. But then read again verse 1 and 2. Jesus, who has just finished speaking about the judgment to come, now reminds the disciples in verse 2 of the, of the vital fact of his ministry. He will die. The religious men might plot, uh, but Jesus already knew that he would be crucified when he went to Jerusalem. God's purposes could not be thwarted by the sinful plans of religious men. In fact, quite the opposite. And then we come to the incident um, at Simon's house, where there's a woman with a jar of extremely expensive perfume. As he's at the table, she pours it on Jesus, which makes the disciples furious. They're thinking of the waste and the good that could have been done in a charitable way for the poor if the perfume had been sold. Jesus takes a very different view. Yes, this perfume was expensive. It would have cost a year's wages for a man. But, and could have undoubtedly, I guess, in that sense, have helped the poor. However, Jesus declares this woman's action to be an act of service. Because in doing what she did, it was the beginning of the preparations for Jesus' burial. Of the death that is to come. There was very much, uh, there was very much at that time an association um, between anointing with perfume and death. Uh, remember the women who went to the tomb um, after the crucifixion, they went with spices to anoint, uh, spices that would have been perfumed to cover up uh, the decomposition smell of the body. So what she's doing here is the beginning of that. But we need to remember as we think about what she's done here uh, that the same point is made about Jesus' life at his birth with the gift of myrrh given by the wise men. From the beginning to the end of the gospel, the fact of Jesus' death was a certainty. Uh, it was why he came. With these two short accounts in chapter 26, 
we see perfectly the truth uh, of the division that the gospel will bring. On one side, we see those who are religious, who hate Jesus and do all they can to destroy both his name and his memory. Whilst on the other hand, we see the love for Jesus uh, in this woman, who in a simple act of service is prepared to give all that she can, all that she has for him. Jesus commends this woman who, like all of us, is a sinner in need of salvation. Because of her love and service that acknowledged Jesus for who he is, Jesus says, this woman will not be forgotten. Well, the same is true for you and me. As we turn to Jesus and acknowledge him to be the Son of God, the crucified and risen Lord, and serve him, we too will not be forgotten. Like her, one day we will receive the commendation of the Lord Jesus as we trust in him and give him our lives. As we acknowledge Jesus in life, so too in death will Jesus acknowledge us before the throne of his Father. Until then, we serve him. We do all that we can to make him known. And in doing so, we know his help and his presence. The letter to the Hebrews helps us to see the reality of our faith in Jesus as it pulls all of this together. Where it says in chapter 4 and verse 16, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may, that we, that we may receive mercy and grace and find help in time of need. Jesus is with us. Jesus has provided for us. Jesus will acknowledge us and give us all that we need. Most notably, a life that is eternal. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you have loved us and that you sent your son to die for us. Thank you, Lord, that that was the purpose of why Jesus came, to bring salvation, to die for sin, our sin, and to win that victory over death. Lord, help us as your people to faithfully honour and acknowledge Jesus. Help us not to be afraid to acknowledge him before others. And Lord, may we hear those words, good and faithful servant, when we stand before him. Lord, may we not let him down. May we serve him and acknowledge him. In Jesus' name we pray.